Hello everyone, my name is Vinny Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Keynesian theory of income and employment determination. John Maynard Keynes presented this theory in his book named The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. This book was published in 1936. According to this theory, aggregate demand is key driver of output, employment and income. That means change in aggregate demand directly influence uh, output, uh, employment and income. Obviously, when aggregate demand increase, output also increase. As output increase, employment increase, income increase, eventually our economy grow. Now, we will see assumptions of this theory. Aggregate demand is key driver. This theory focus on short time period. Close economy, that means no international trade. During short time period, technology remain constant. This theory support government intervention. Money illusion. According to Keynes, people have money illusion. That means people focus on monetary value rather than real value. For example, wages and prices simultaneously increase. Then employees only focus on increase in wages. Their money has increased, but they ignore uh, increase in prices. Due to increase in prices, increase wages is not beneficial for them. So here people focusing on monetary value and ignoring real value. Uh, saving is a function of uh, income. Investment depend on rate of interest and marginal efficiency of capital. Aggregate supply remain constant during short time period. There is autonomous investment. Uh, means change mainly focus on autonomous investment because uh, change support government intervention and autonomous investment mainly done by government. According to Keynes, there are two approaches to determine income and output. Uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply approach saving and investment approach one by one we discuss about each approach first of all we will see aggregate demand and aggregate supply approach here we are talking about two sector economy that's why aggregate demand equal to c plus i here ad is aggregate demand c represent consumption expenditure i represent investment expenditure here we assume our investment is autonomous Autonomous investment remain constant. That means autonomous investment will not change no matter income increasing or decreasing. Autonomous investment do not depend on income. And aggregate supply equal to C plus S. Here AS represent aggregate supply. C represent consumption expenditure. S represent saving. So our aggregate supply equal to C plus S. And equilibrium level of income and output will determine where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. Here we have employment, income, consumption expenditure, saving, investment expenditure, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, remarks. So, aggregate demand equal to C plus I. That means when we add consumption expenditure, and investment expenditure, it will become equal to aggregate demand. Aggregate supply equal to C plus S. That means when we add consumption and saving, it will become equal to aggregate supply. Here you can see our investment is constant because our investment is autonomous and autonomous investment remain constant no matter income increasing or decreasing. Initially saving goes in negative because initially we do not have income to save. So here you can see our aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. As we earlier discussed, equilibrium level of income and output is determined at the point where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. So here our aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. That's why equilibrium level of uh, employment is 20 and equilibrium level of income is 200 because at this point aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. So this will be called our equilibrium point. Before this you can see aggregate demand more than aggregate supply. After this you can see aggregate supply is more than aggregate demand. So this will be called our aggregate, this will be called our equilibrium point. Now we will see diagram. On x-axis we have income, output or employment. y-axis we have aggregate demand. 
this 45 degree line represent aggregate supply and this curve represent aggregate demand e is our equilibrium point because at this point aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply and equilibrium level of income or we can say that equilibrium level of employment is o y before equilibrium you can see aggregate demand exceed than aggregate supply after equilibrium you can see aggregate supply exceed than aggregate demand but our equilibrium point is e where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply now we will see saving and investment approach according to classical economist uh, saving will always equal to investment but according to keynes saving is not always equal to investment but when aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply then planned saving will equal to planned investment so we can say that equilibrium level of income is determined where planned saving is equal to planned investment when aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply then planned saving will equal to planned investment as we know aggregate demand equal to c plus i aggregate supply equal to c plus s c c cancel with each other so saving become equal to investment first column we have planned saving second column we have planned investment last column we have remarks here you can see planned saving is equal to planned investment so this will be called our equilibrium point before equilibrium investment is more than saving after equilibrium saving is more than investment on x x we have income output or employment y axis we have saving and investment this horizontal line represent uh, investment our investment is constant because our investment is autonomous and this curve represent our saving initial our saving goes negative because we don't have income to save e will be called equilibrium point because at this point saving is equal to investment o y is our equilibrium income now we will see effective demand Keynesian theory mainly depend on effective demand. Keynesian theory mainly depend on effective demand and effective demand determined by aggregate demand price and aggregate supply price. What do you mean by aggregate demand price? Aggregate demand price is total amount of money that organization expect to receive from the sale of output which is produced by a specific number of workers. aggregate demand price means total amount of money that organization expect to receive from the sale of output which is produced by specific number of workers suppose there are 100 workers and output produced by them is equal to 1000 from the sale of 1000 unit organization expect to receive 50000 rupees so this 50000 rupees will be called aggregate demand price on x axis we have employment y axis we have aggregate demand price employment and aggregate demand price have a positive relation that means uh, as aggregate demand price increase employment will also increase and this curve called aggregate demand function curve and this curve mainly shows the relationship between aggregate demand price and employment second determinant of effective demand aggregate supply price aggregate supply price is total amount of money that organization must be receive from the sale of output which is produced by specific number of workers for example there are 100 workers output produced by them is equal to 1000 unit and wages cost of hiring this workers is equal to 3500 from the sale of 1000 unit organization must be receive 3500 rupees otherwise organization is not able to cover cost of these employees this 3500 will be called aggregate supply price aggregate supply price is total amount of money that organization must be receive from the output which is produced by specific number of workers x axis we have employment y axis we have aggregate supply price aggregate supply price and employment have a positive relation as aggregate supply price increase employment also increase this is aggregate supply function curve which shows the relationship between aggregate supply price and employment after e point aggregate function curve become vertical but why because e is a full employment point after e point uh, laborers are not available in economy because e is a full employment point now we will see effective demand 
effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. Effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. In this diagram on x axis we have employment, y axis we have aggregate demand price and aggregate supply price. This curve represents aggregate demand function, this curve represents aggregate supply function. E point will be called effective demand point because at this E point aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. But this is not full employment point, full employment point is E1. At this E point we have N and one unemployment. That means that effective demand point we have N and one unemployment in economy. According to this theory, main cause of unemployment is lack of uh, aggregate demand. As we earlier discussed, aggregate demand is key driver of economy. And uh, if there is unemployment, that means lack of uh, aggregate demand. And aggregate demand is equal to C plus I. During short time period, consumption is constant. So by change in investment, uh, we can increase uh, aggregate demand. But private sector will not invest because private sector are influenced by a profit motive if demand is already less then why should private sector invest so government will intervene and investment done by government will be called autonomous investment that's why Keynesian theory mainly focus on autonomous investment now we'll see features of this theory this theory entirely depend on effective demand and effective demand is point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. And uh, this theory support uh, government intervention because according to Keynes, uh, when there is lack of aggregate uh, demand, then private sector are not supposed to invest. That's why government intervention is must. And this theory talks about uh, multiplier. According to Keynes, uh, investment have multiplier effect on income and employment. A classical economists are in favor of a sales law of market. Sales law of market means supply creates its own demand, but uh, Keynes completely reject the sales law of market. And this theory has significant impact on economic policies like monetary and fiscal policy. This theory helps to understand uh, why economy experience uh, recession or depression. And this theory explains how unemployment can reduce by increasing in aggregate demand. And uh, according to this theory, equilibrium possible before uh, full employment uh, point. Classical economist talks about uh, equilibrium at full employment point. But according to Keynes, uh, equilibrium possible even before a full employment point. And this theory is crucial in macroeconomics because it helps to understand how to manage aggregate demand and provide a tool to address unemployment level. Now we will see criticism. Concept of equilibrium is contradicted. According to Keynes, equilibrium is possible even before full employment point. According to Keynes, equilibrium is possible even before full employment point. What do you mean by equilibrium? Equilibrium means everything stable in economy. If there is still unemployment, then how you can say that this is equilibrium point? This theory focuses on short time period, but what's about long time period? And this theory based on closed economy, what's about international trade? International trade also very important. This theory more focus on aggregate demand and neglect aggregate supply. According to this theory, government intervention are a must, but sometimes government intervention lead to inefficiency in economy. And this theory neglect importance of productivity, innovation. This is very static theory, but in reality our economy is dynamic. There is so much fluctuation. This theory assumes technology is constant, but technology is not constant. And a limited applicability of multiplier. Keynes talk about investment multiplier, but in reality there is limit applicability of uh, investment multiplier. And this theory more focus on autonomous investment and very less focus on induced investment. Post Keynesian economists like uh, Hanson Hicks also criticize this theory. So this is all about uh, Keynesian theory of income and employment. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.